Hello everyone, this is Gary Bennett at Excel Me. Welcome to our YouTube um, series on Objective-C programming from our book Objective-C for Absolute Beginners. And tonight we're going to be um, continuing the previous class where we uh, made our own um, class, our own object uh, with Objective-C and Xcode. And tonight we're going to learn how to use it in Xcode. Um, if you need to look at the previous class um, and all the other previous classes that we do on every Wednesday night, they're, they're done both live and recorded, uh, just go to excelme.com, click on uh, the free video, and you can um, click to register to watch them live, or you can click on the YouTube and, or any of these here and watch um, the recordings. And so we're going to be going over this one, making a class. And tonight we're going to be using a class, uh, which is the same one that we used from um, last week. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel every time I upload a new video, you get it as well. And likewise, when you sign up for the GoToWebinar series, you get a reminder every Wednesday about the courses, the free classes. So you can attend live if you want. And at the end of uh, every session, I do Q&A uh, for those that are attending live. You can ask any question from the book or on Objective-C iPhone development, you name it. All right, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and delve into Xcode. And so just to remind ourselves, we made a project, just a simple Objective-C project, and we created a class called My Class. Um, right here, we got the .h and the .m file, also known as the interface file and the implementation file. And here's where we've defined um, what our class does. Our class has some instance variables and it has some uh, methods and then they're uh, described in the .m file where what they do. So let's go ahead now and use our class that we've created. And I'm just going to copy and paste some code so we don't waste time because time is limited on the YouTube videos. And so I'm going to copy some code in here. And the first thing I'm do inside my init, my initialization um, method that gets called when we allocate memory, which we'll see here in a bit, I'm going to initialize my instance variables. Don't want to do that. And um, so here's our, um, our IVARs, and they're initialized, so this gets called. And so now when we call our getters and setter methods and any other methods we're returning and manipulating our variables, our instance variables, they are all initialized. And now let's go to the entry point of our program, which is always main. And let's go ahead and add some code that uses um, our, uh, our class. Well, the first thing I need to do to use the class is I need to go ahead and um, import our class. So when I start typing it um, and uh, using the methods in the class, it knows about it. So it's called my class and it will go ahead and autocomplete for us. And now again, I'm going to copy some code. And I'm going to make just some a few changes to the code that I'm going to copy. Do, 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 do. I'm going to copy it right there. Go ahead and paste it in right here. All right, so let's go ahead and go through this. And I got a little class here. And I want to call this correctly my class. All right, so let's go through this line by line here. Um, first of all, what it's going to do, and oops, I need to copy that too. First of all, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and instantiate our objects. Instantiation, if you remember, is simply copying and allocating our, um, our classes and it makes an individual object. And these are standalone objects that, um, that we can go ahead and manipulate. So here I made a variable called my programmer. And what I've done is first we go ahead and call alloc. And alloc is a method inside of um, NS object and um, which is our very parent object and that will go ahead and allocate the memory required for our object. The next thing we do is we call init and init will go ahead and initialize our object. Well we've defined our own init, we've defined init and it is 
right here. So this is going to go ahead and get called, and which means our we call the parent object init, which is super, because you remember our class comes from NS object. This is the parent to my class. So the parents um, uh, gets uh, init gets called and allocated. And then also if that's successful, assuming there's enough memory and everything goes right, if that's successful, we'll go ahead and um, initialize our instance variables. Next, 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 next. Next, we'll go ahead and I just wanted to call some methods here. So the first method I'm going to go ahead and call is my programmer programmer. And what that's going to do is we're going to call the method uh, programmer, which belongs to the my programmer object, this guy. Even though these guys are from the exact same parent, we're focusing on the my, on my programmer object. These are all separate. These are all separate individuals, if you will. Right? They have their own memory space and instance variables, and if we manipulate one, we do not manipulate the other. They're free. Okay, so we're going to look to see if my programmer is going to go ahead and return a true or a false. So we call this method programmer. Programmer, if you'll remember here, programmer, programmer, gets called and it returns is programmer. Well, what's is programmer? It's set to false. So we're going to return a bool here. Here we return a type bool, which is set to false, is programmer set to false. So we re we're returning false. Well, we return false. We go to the else part of the if, which is this right here, and we're going to print uh, the programmer is not a great programmer. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to call a setter method. Setter methods, there are setter methods and getter methods are two common types of methods. There's other types, but setters and methods, setters and getter methods. Setters are going to go ahead and set an instance variable. A getter method will return um, an instance variable. So we're going to go ahead and set one. So we're going to call set age and we're going to pass in 45. 45, if you remember here, is when we call set age, we pass in, it's an int, it's 45. 45 will be assigned to new age and new age will now be assigned, the 45 will be assigned to age. It was 29, but now I'm 45. So just like that, I've gained uh, 16 years. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and set it. I'm not returning anything, nothing gets returned. We're just setting the instance variable. And um, we can also here get the name, and I assign that to a variable. Same thing, it's gonna get the name that we've assigned to um, our instance variable. Oops, not what I wanted, I wanted this guy. And so get name returns the name, in this case it's excelme.com. It's an NS string pointer, and that's going to return our um, Excel me. Well, um, I got a little warning here saying that it's not being used. That's because I kind of refactored this, and I said, you know what? Instead of making all these instance variables for or all these variables up that um, hold what we've returned from our getters, I just put it here and called it directly: get name, get age, and programmer. Programmer returns true or false, so a, a one or a zero is going to get printed out here. So let's quickly, we just got a few seconds, let's go ahead and step through this real quick. We'll go ahead and build and run the program. I'll set a breakpoint in the gutter there and let it rip. Hopefully um, we don't have any errors and we don't, knock on wood. Let's go ahead and kind of step through the program. So we're going to uh, call the first, program, uh, the first uh, method programmer. Let's step into it. We'll use our debugger here and step into it, we can see is programmer is set to no because we did it right here. Um, we're gonna return no, let's step out of this method and go to our next line of code. We can look to see programmer is, 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 is. Come on, hover over it. I don't know why it's not showing it. Oh, that's because it's, uh, it's, it's not a variable, it's a method. Um, but you can see it stepped over because it returned no and now it's gonna print out to our console or output session. Uh, false is not a great programmer good and then we can go ahead and we can just step into this and actually I don't um, we're gonna go ahead and step into the set age we're gonna set the age to 45 let's step into it 
you can see that age is 29 right now, right? Because this, this got initialized as soon as we allocated the memory. And if I set a breakpoint right when we did the alloc, you would have saw it step in here. So this has already been set. Our instance variable has already been set to 29. And, but new age got passed in 45. And we're going to now set that to 45. And new age goes out of scope right here. It uh, goes away, but age is going to be set to 45. Let's go ahead and step out in our debugger. And um, so we set that age. And we can go and um, execute our next output here and print everything out if we want. And we print out all of our our getters here, our name, our age, and true or false. Here it is, our name, our age, and it is false. Now, you're asking, hey Gary, how come the age is 29? We just set it to 45. Well, look here. Programmer 1. We were setting programmer. Remember, all these guys are separate instances. They all have their own variables and instance variables. So I'm just demonstrating here, here's programmer, here's programmer one and programmer two. So they're all separate instances. So you need to make sure if you have separate instances of the same object um, from the same class, which ones you're referring to. All right, well, hopefully this class was useful for you. I will just step into it right here so you can see the allocation occurring. And we know we just got a few seconds left here on the YouTube video. But you can see each one, if I step, do a step into, right, you can see the init getting called here, and it's all being allocated. If I step out, it now has, it will, right now it's pointing, it has a null pointer, no memory address. But as soon as I finish this line of code, it's going to get a good memory location. And you can see the last digits are 730. And when I do the next init, which is going to step into and go through its init, The last one was 730. You'll see it's still null. This is 730. But um, this one here is uh, 7B0, different memory location. And then likewise for this. All separate objects with separate memory locations. Come on, let go. 7D0, 7B0, 730. All right, well, thanks for attending. For those of you that are attending live, uh, once I stop the recording, I'll go ahead and ask, uh, you can ask any questions and I'll answer them on any question that you have on this topic or any others from the book. Thanks everybody for attending and we'll see you next Wednesday night at the same time. Good night.